Let's all stand. Welcome. Welcome to Homecoming Revival. Take your hymnals and let's sing hymn number 100, Just One More Soul. What does God want us to do? Tell the world about Jesus. Amen. Ready? Sing. The preachers are weary and the singers are tired. The church as we know it is losing its fire. Some are discouraged. Bring the Lord, but we must return. Here it is. this afternoon. For those of you that weren't here, uh, 10 o'clock this morning, we had a, a chapel service under the tent, and uh, I enjoyed the college students getting up and talking about uh, testimonies of them witnessing at work. Now, sometimes it was a gospel presentation, and sometimes they'd get back in the kitchen and they'd just sing, kind of like you're doing, amen? They'd find a song and they'd just sing it, and the co-workers would begin to pick up on what they sang about. And, uh, and they'd begin to say, hey, I like that song. Yeah. In fact, one of them was singing, Don't Quit. And they yeah. said, I, I like that, encourage me. Yeah. And another one said, you girls were singing yesterday. Don't stop now, keep singing. And those yeah. girls were uh, even asked by an employee to keep singing. And I like what one college student said. He said, I witnessed to my coworker. My coworker struggled with it, knew that we were all saved, knew he wasn't saved, and finally accepted Christ as his savior. Didn't know how to quite word his salvation. Came back later to the college guys and he says, hey, what, hey guess what, guys? I'm, I'm affiliated with you guys now. <laughs> he said, I got affiliated last night or something along those lines. And uh, we call that joining the family. We call that being born again. He said, I'm affiliated now. So he's, he's in. You know what the Bible calls it? You know what the Bible calls it? Accepted in the beloved. Look it up in Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, we're accepted. To the, to the glory of his grace, the Bible says, we're accepted in the beloved. And thank you, college students, for being a witness. And uh, let's sing another song. Let's go to page number 555. We have so much to thank him for. Page number 555. And uh, let's just sing. Thanks for being here tonight. Here we go. Ready? When I look.
is on Jesus Christ. You know, you worked hard today. Uh, went to school, went to work. Some of you just getting here by the skin of your teeth, whatever that means, right? But you're here. Dodging raindrops on your way in, but you're here. Amen. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. Who is Jesus Christ? He's the bread of life. And I'm glad he never changes. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for what you've done for us this evening, what you've done for us today. Lord, this week has been such a blessing, and we come to you again tonight with hungry hearts. We rely on you. We ask for your man of God to preach your word with total freedom. Holy Spirit, open wide the opportunity of taking your word and let it be just full liberty in your house tonight. Lord, open our hearts and Lord, use him in a special way. Use the, the sermon in song. Use the sermon from your word. And Lord, I change our hearts. Speak to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. more miracles if you're our Messiah give us new bread each day just like our fathers had when they journeyed through the wilderness this is what Jesus had to say Let's all stand once more, page number 421, hymn number 421. It's that unseen hand that's always there. I don't know what you went through today. I don't know what you're facing tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. I know who holds my hand, the unseen hand. It's there. Trust it. Amen. Ready? Sing. There is an
Job said, my eyes will see the Lord. That's what he said. He looked ahead with eyes of faith and he said, someday I'm going to see my, my creator. And someday that unseen hand will be a very seen hand. I can't wait. wonder what he looks like. You know, when the disciples met together, they sang with him. I wonder what he sings like. I wonder if I'll get to hear him sing. Think of a place with no pain, no heartache, no suffering. Pastor, no pain, Pastor. <laughs> Perfect body, never say goodbye to anybody you love. Peace forever, no anxiety, no fear, no bills, <laughs> no bills to pay. Ladies, you'll never prepare another meal unwillingly. <laughs> you'll love everything you do in heaven because our Savior will be there and He's created a perfect place. He said, let not your heart be troubled believe in God, believe also in me. I go to prepare a place for you. I want to see him. I want to see him. Sing that third verse. I long to see. Ready? Lift your voice. Ready? I long to see sing that song here in just a moment. I want to welcome you to Homecoming Revival. Nothing like it, amen? Uh, getting away from the world for a, for a good few days, and uh, we feel like we've been in revival really for a couple weeks, don't we, church? And it's been, it's been refreshing in our spirit and in our soul. Lord, don't stop now, amen? Page number 55, page number 55 in our hymnals. We'll sing in just a moment. For those of you that are our friends and guests, uh, you're fine, just keep playing. Those of you that are our friends and guests, uh, we need to let you know if you're uh, maybe just visiting with us for this evening. Uh, Pastor Gray had an accident on Friday afternoon this past week, and uh, he fell and broke two ribs, uh, seriously broke them, uh, major accident, and he is uh, laid up right now at home. Um, he wants to be here so bad, and he, uh, the only conversation that I've had with him since the accident went something like this, Brother Robinson tell the people that I love them. It was less than a, than a minute conversation. It's what he could do. Early on a Sunday morning, about 6.30, he said, just tell the people that I love them. Pastor, we know you want to be here. We're going to keep on going for the Lord. Pastor, be encouraged in your heart that we're going on for the Lord. Let's sing. I know he's listening. Let's all sing for the Lord, but sing for our pastor who's maybe wondering, uh, how's it going down there at the church house? Praise the Lord because of Jesus Christ. It's going good. Amen. Page number 55, and let's sing. Lift your voice now, sing.
our visitors if we could do that. I know I saw some faces that were uh, uh, maybe visiting with us. So if you have a visitor, a friend with you, uh, right in your pew or uh, near you, just raise your hand. Uh, we just want to get your names and uh, welcome you. Yes, sir, Brother Titus in the back. Zach. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was his first name? Charles. Charles. Good to have you, Charles. And uh, let's give Charles a hand. Amen. Good to see you. You're in good company there. And uh, thank you for bringing your uh, co-worker. Praise the Lord. A lot of that going on. Amen. Hey, you get the idea that God puts you in your workplace to be a witness? Supposed to be a witness everywhere you go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any other visitors? I uh, saw a hand here. Yes, sir. Brother Joseph, raise your hand. Yes, sir. Amen. Two Josephs. Joseph and Joseph, right? And what was the other name? Daniel. All right. Gentlemen, we're glad you're here. Let's give them a hand. Amen. We're glad you're here. Amen. Anybody else visiting with us, we want to make you feel welcome. And looking across, looking for motion, just holler out a name. There you go. All right. We're glad that you're here. Amen. Uh, we're going to take a moment and we're going to pray and then uh, we're going to get into the preaching of God's word. Brother Nichols is going to come sing. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we heard him preach this afternoon and uh, love the message. Love the message. If, uh, if you don't know the word sagacity, you need to look it up. Amen. Uh, the idea was uh, have discernment and then live it out. Go do it. Amen. Uh, make good choices. A great message for the young people, and uh, many of you are there. So uh, we are having, uh, just I'll say this before we sing the next song and, and pray, uh, but we are having uh, chapel services tomorrow uh, at the usual time. Uh, we are having a meal in the dining hall after service tonight, uh, so we're just not going to let the rain stop us. We're going to do the best of our ability to just keep on going. Amen. Uh, well, everywhere we eat, there's going to be a roof over your head. So whether it's the tent or whether it's the dining hall, we'll make sure you're sheltered. And I can't promise you between here and there, but that's your deal anyway. Uh, did you get the text that said bring an umbrella? How many of you brought an umbrella? How many of you didn't bring an umbrella? That's okay. All right. We'll find out who's, who's walking comfortably with an umbrella and who's making a mad dash, right? That's it. All right. Uh, let's take a moment and uh, let's ask the Lord to bless the service tonight. Uh, I believe that the Lord will... Uh, speak to our hearts if we ask him to. Uh, he said to ask, right? He said to ask believing. He said to ask for wisdom. Look at James 1.5. If you, if you lack wisdom, you just ask God, and you ask in faith, and he'll give to you, the Bible says, liberally. Now, that doesn't mean God is a liberal, <laughs> right? But that means he gives liberally. That means he's generous with wisdom if you ask. Let's ask him. Let's bow our head and close our eyes and ask him. Lord, we ask for wisdom tonight. As we hear the preaching of your word, Lord, we want to hear from heaven. Lord, stir our hearts with your scriptures. Holy Spirit, take those scriptures and, and build us up on the inside. Bring us closer to you. Lord, as we've even heard Jesus lifted up tonight, Lord, you said if we lift up Jesus Christ, Lord, if, if Christ is lifted up in the church, that he'll draw, that he'll draw men. Lord, we want to lift you up this evening. We do that by preaching your word. We, we do that by talking about you. Lord, we love you. Lord, you mean so much to us. and We're imperfect people. But Lord, we believe we have a perfect book. We believe we have a perfect Savior. We have a perfect Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask believing that you will meet with us this evening if we ask you. So Lord, that's what we're asking. Lord, I pray that you'd fill Brother Nichols with your spirit as he sings. Lord, I pray that you'd spill, uh, fill Brother Hicks with your spirit as he preaches. And Lord, I pray that it would be uh, memorable in our hearts. Lord, we don't want to leave the same. Lord, change us and help us to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing one hymn, and then Brother Nichols will come. And let's sing page number 578, God Walks the Dark Hills. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you about the temperature in the room. How many of you are hot? Raise your hand. You're, you're just uh, perspiring. Okay. Don't ask the guy who's leading the singing about the temperature. Folks, I am burning up in here. And uh, how, how many of you are cold? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. About a dozen of you. How many of you are just right? Don't touch it. Okay. All right. I'll keep sweating for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's all stand once more, and we're just going to stretch, and then uh, we'll keep going. Amen. Page number 578, and whoo, yeah, ha. Huh. God walks the dark hills. Ready and sing. Ready. 
God walks the dark hills, the highways and to you. You know, the, the, the Lord said that um, without him you could do nothing, but with his strength, amen, we can, we can see things done with his strength. And this song is called With His Strength. If I always understood every trial that came my way, I'd forget how much I need the Lord each and every day. I'd start to think I had the answers, not see the need to pray. Soon I'd think I was so wise in all my foolish self-made way. But I've learned along life's journey I don't have to understand I don't have to know the reasons Or in frustration make demands Even though at times my heart pain and heartaches cloud my way I can always trust my Jesus I know he'll help me understand someday if the answers all were mine I could solve things just on my own in no time at all, my heart would be hardened as a stone. I'd chalk it up to fate or destiny, some random happenstance. There would be no God, design or plan, just luck or stroke of change. But one fine day, 
I'll cross that river and I'll stand on heaven's shore. There I'll learn the reasons, all the wise and so much more. But for now, I must stop asking why. Only ask him how, how to let his grace shine through me and with his strength come forth as gold somehow. And with his strength come forth as gold somehow. You know, uh, when my wife and I walked across, or she walked down the aisle to me at our wedding, and we said those vows, and we said, till sickness, or till sickness, how do you say it? In sickness and in health, my wife had no idea what she was signing up for. In 1995, I woke up one morning on July 5th, 1995, and I could not move. My hands were all gnarled up. My body was in an embryonic uh, tight roll. My feet were pointed straight down. I was in an intense amount of pain. My wife worked trying for hours to try to get my fingers and hands to open up. And, and that lasted for about a month and then it went away. And I thought, okay, that's all, that's, that was interesting. And um, about six months later, it happened again. And then it began to happen more frequently. 1997, I was taken to a clinic in Reno, Nevada, where they were kind of doing guinea pig stuff. And and I uh, took 35 intravenous treatments to try to help me. They diagnosed me with Lyme's disease, advanced Lyme's disease. They had determined that it had been in my body for at least 15 years when they discovered it. So there was no antibiotics and drugs and things that could knock it out of my body. Over these past 25 some years, I've been in many hospitals, uh, Mayo Clinic. I've been in numerous very famous well-known hospitals. And uh, twice my wife was told that I had not long to live and she sat my children down and told them that their father was, was not gonna be here too much longer. I married a gem of a woman. She told my children both times, but we're not gonna be bitter. We're gonna keep serving Jesus with our lives. And God in his grace has allowed me to continue forward. My father passed away in February. He always said that, don't worry, son, they're just practicing physicians. They don't know what they're doing. And, uh, <laughs> God kept coming through. I had been bedridden many years ago, uh, probably in about 2006 or 2004, I do not remember which, but I had been bedridden for about 65 days and uh, wheelchairs, I've spent about 65, 70% of the last 25 years in a wheelchair. Four times I've gone through uh, therapy where they lift you out of the wheelchair by a machine, put you down in the water, and they work on you for about a month and a half, two months, finally get you up on the mats and work on you there. And finally, you get up to the bars and try to learn how to move your feet and your legs. And the Lyme's disease got a hold of my muscular system and my nervous system. And I, when I get real bad, I look like I have Parkinson's disease. I have five and a half inches of titanium in my neck because my neck snapped and a vertebrae busted into five pieces in my neck. And uh, I have a you know, cadaver in there, and I've always wondered how it's going to work when we get to the rapture, if that leaves, and I'm just flopping around. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how, that, how that all works. But, <laughs> but uh, my mother called me. I had been bedridden for about 65 days, and my mom called me. I was away from the Lord when I was a young man, and wild and out of God's will. And uh, my mom called me and with tears in her, in her voice, she was crying and she said, son, I don't know why God's doing this now. Why didn't he do it to you when you were a rebel? Why is he doing it now when, when you're trying to serve him? And I said to my mother, you know, <clears throat> it's not for us to search for why, but rather to search for how. Can I use this for you, Lord? What are you trying to teach me? So that God could be given the glory through it all. I never knew as I was just trying to make it to my pulpit that God began to put songs on my heart. I never, I never dreamed all those times I was preaching my, behind my pulpit on a chair with 103 and 104 fever hundreds of times. I never knew that God was starting to use my life 
in a way that he intended through my music. I never knew that. But my mother called me and I prayed with her and we got done and a little bit later she called me back and she said, uh, I know what's going on now, son. I, I understand it. I said, you do. Please share. <laughs> she said, well, son, if God wanted it that way, Daniel would have never been in the lion's den. She said, if God wanted it that way, Joseph would have never been in prison. If God wanted it that way, Job would have never lost his family. I said, just a minute, mom. And I reached over to the side of the bed and I grabbed a, a notepad and a pen. I said, okay, start over. And she started talking and I wrote the chorus to this song that I'm just going to sing you. It's called God Wanted It That Way. My mother helped me come to terms with the fact that God makes no mistakes. No matter what you're going through in your life and your story may be a thousand times worse than mine. But I can tell you this. He's on his throne. Nothing passes to you that he did not filter first. And he has a purpose in it all. And when you decide that you're going to use it for God, it's just a wonderful thing. I wish I could testify to you for a couple of hours of what God has done in my life. Brother Hicks knows many of the things that God has done through me. It would have never happened if I hadn't got that disease. So I encourage you, whatever you're going through in your life, understand something. God wanted it that way. Joseph's brothers came to him and, 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 and before him. And Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it unto good. Never forget that. I'll sing this for you. I pray it'll be a blessing to your heart. If God wanted it that way, Daniel would have never known the lion's den. And Joseph would have the throne without the prison. David would have never known Saul's jealousy. And Job would have never lost his family. Stephen would have never been stoned. And the beatings of Paul would have never been known but God wanted it that way God wanted it that way every trial every test was only for the best it was always in his place I just wanted it that way. If God wanted it that way, no one would have ever known the trail of blood. And Tyndale would have the word of God completed. Preachers would have never heard their children cry as they walked along to that stake to die. Nero would have never had the throne. The Colosseums of Rome would have never been known. But God wanted it that way. us joy as well as sorrow. 
trials will always come from day to day and heartache may cross our path along the way oh but he holds our lives in his hand and our hopes and What a blessing. Y'all believe that? Mm. I just don't know what direction to go, really. Go direction toward God, I guess. So much truth in that. And I sat down there and listened to that song. And I thought about myself when I would be at the absolute bottom. I've known that man for nearly two decades and, and I've watched him go through so many storms, you know, and I'd get myself all caught up in what was going around me and the Holy Spirit said, hey, what about Brother Nichols? And God take a vessel like that and encourage a vessel like this. He said, I gotta have that grace that he's got. God's not a respecter of person. And I'm going to tell you over and over and over being encouraged to keep on keeping on. God puts those people in our life for a reason. Another one sitting right back there, Dr. Darrell Moore. Nobody has any idea of the relationship that we share. I, I know so many things that he's went through in his life, all the way back to a young man, just a brute. He could put a refrigerator on his back and tote it off and, and fell off a roof and busted up his whole body and didn't even know if he's going to be able to function anymore. And I don't know how many thousands of miles that he's carried the gospel on the streets of Chicago and wore the hide off the knuckles to tell little children and mamas and daddies about Jesus. Boy, I'm going to tell you that done something to me to be around people like that. My hero sitting right over there. And I picked her up and carried her up to Chicago area to go to college and man, everything was wonderful and great. Within one year, she, she was diagnosed with a malignant melanoma cancer in the fourth stage. The doctor said, we don't even know if we can give you any hope. Holding a little baby boy that diagnosed with autism and we didn't have a clue what was going on in our life and how to handle it. But God had put people around our life and not one time did I ever hear her say, I think we made a mistake. We need to go back home. This thing of God is too rough. It's too tough. We need to get out of here. Not one time in 27 years of serving God because of God putting people like that in our lives. Let me tell you something folks, God wanted it that way. Well we need to get down and grab a hold of God tonight and just see who he really is. So many of us is holding back. You got to guard up and say I want to go out only so far. Ah, no, 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 no. 
And I want to preach a thought tonight. Oh, please don't sell the farm. Please don't sell the farm. He had no idea what I was preaching. I had no idea what he's singing. I don't talk about that. I just want God to always be in control of everything. As I travel this nation, it's, a, it's like a domino effect that is going on in this world today. Any little old thing happen, any little old storm show up inside of the home. And man, I'm selling the farm. I'm picking up. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. I asked you tonight, church, what in the world is the next generation going to do if we sell the farm? You know what you're going to do? They're not going to have anywhere to come back to. Yeah. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. I got to read a little bit and bear my heart a little bit and preach a little bit. Ask God to bless this meeting. Ask God to do something real in your life. Stop playing church at all. I'm talking about let God do something real in your life. Young person, you're sitting here in bondage. Just stop. Draw a circle around you right now and say, Holy Ghost of God, do something in my life. Daddy, that's bitter and upset and you're just here because you know you ought to be here. Please draw that circle around yourself. Mama, draw it around yourself. Beg God to do something in your life tonight. The Bible said in verse 11, and he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that follow to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. He's left the farm now. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. When he had spent all, and there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And when he went and joined himself to a citizen, of that country, and he set him into the fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk of the swine. Hmm? Did he? What's the swine's eat? And no man gave unto him. You know, people said he was eating the husk, but the Bible says there that no man gave to him. He didn't even have a husk, he didn't have nothing. And then he came to himself. Well, if you don't get anything else tonight, just get that. Your Bible's true. I'm going to tell you something. You do right things on the farm, buddy, and you teach right, and you have them in their place. One day they'll come to their self. The Bible said in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way it should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. That is a promise from God himself. He said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. And I will arise and go to my father and I'll say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but he when he was yet a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight and no more to be worthy to call thy son. But thy father said to the servant, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand. Boy, that jumped out at me. And you know what? I'm going to tell you, that ring means something. That ring represents value. Young people, listen to me tonight. I'm going to tell you, you get your life clean, that means you're more valuable. Yes, sir. You think of an old car, old car beat up and you restore that car? That old car is worth a whole lot more. Listen to me. Be clean. Be clean. And you will be more valuable for the glory of God. And shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Well, this is my son is dead and is alive again. And he was lost and now found and began to be merry. Now the elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and heard music and dancing. And he called one of the nigh to the house and he heard music and dancing. Oh, read it again. And he called one of the servants and asked, what does this thing mean? And he said unto him, thy brother has come and thy father hath killed the fatty calf because he received him safe and sound. And he was angry. Don't miss that. We got a bitter son here. And he would not go in and therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, lo, 
These many years do I serve thee, neither transgress it I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou hast never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for loving us tonight. Lord, thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit you've been giving us. Lord, I just want to praise your name. I want to thank you, God, for what you're doing. I want to thank you for everybody that's under the sound of my voice. God, I want to thank you for allowing me to be here. God, please touch me in a special way. Remove me out of the way. Get this old flesh out of here, God. This old dirty dirt and dust to the earth, God. I pray that they just uh, key in on you tonight. Lord, I pray that they wouldn't even notice that I was here. I want to be a vessel and a help. Oh, God, please help us tonight. Help a young person to realize how real you are. Help a daddy to realize how bad he needs you. Oh God, please do something tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And we see in verse 23, there's a calf. And we see there in verse 24, there's a field. So I believe I can say tonight that there's a farm. Oh, you can say, man, I ain't got a farm. Hey, you got some red meat in the freezer tonight? Huh? You got a little bit of grass out there and cut? Let me tell you, draw a circle around you tonight, sir, because you have a farm, Amen. A farm is where daddy's at. There's an elder son here, a younger son. Maybe a mama, I don't know, it's not there. But everything was centered around the farm at this home. If you think about it, everything centers around land pretty much. When America was founded, it was all about the land, my friend. And then the Westerners, when they came across and they risked their lives, what were they risking their life for? A piece of land. It was very, very important. And it's the same way for this father right here. There was some sacrifice that he gave to have that home. Every daddy, every mama, everybody shares this sacrifice. We want our children to be inside of a home. We don't want them to be taken care of. We want them to be protected. It's the same way right here. This story really reminds me a lot of what church was when Lisa and I got saved. Man, I think that we are living in a generation of my age that has seen more change than any other generation of history. I believe that. I have witnessed a lot of things. I'm going to tell you something, boy. Uh, me and Brother Mo used to sit around and talk about the heyday of old time meetings, old time preaching, man. I'm talking about people's lives change. I'm talking about where the Holy Ghost would turn a place upside down. And son, it's diminishing off the face of this earth because people are not willing to sell out anymore. People don't want God anymore. I'm telling you, I come up in the heyday, I feel like, and man, I saw God move in an unbelievable way. And we're seeing him move less and less because people won't let him move. Everything when we got saved was centered around church, Brother Matney. Everything. You've told me story and story and story about you being a young man here, the importance of church and the home. You know what? When I was when I got saved, they still shut places down in our town. Boy, you better buy some gas. Man, you're not going to this place and that place. They gonna shut the doors on Sunday. They still recognize that that was a large day. But not now. It's the biggest shopping day of the cotton picking week. Church was so important for everybody. We met Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. We came expecting something from God. My wife and myself would sit there like two little bitty birds with our mouth open. That old gray herd prophet, old Otis Hodnett, would stand up there with a King James Bible and preach the word of God. And I'd take the pages and I would just look at it. I'd say, oh God, please speak to my heart. God, do something in my life. Oh, make yourself real. And I'd walk with him day and night. And I'm going to tell you something I've never asked for a congregation. I don't run around this country asking for places to preach. I just want to be with God. Amen. We prayed together as a church. We read the Bible as together as a church. We told others about Jesus as a church. We tied together as a church. Do you know what it is tonight? 
I tell you what, it is a secondary, amen. It's secondary. Hey, just come on to church if you feel like it. God have mercy on us tonight. We have revival. This thing ought to be packed out. And I thank God for the people that are there. Well, I'm going to tell you, the people who truly need it are still out there somewhere, amen. They don't come in here and feast around the throne of God. They want to be out there hobnobbing around this world, fooling around and doing other things. I'm going to tell you, there's something wrong with that. I've never missed a cotton picking revival in 27 years of my life as serving God. God in our home church no sir matter of fact I'd cry the last night I'd be so full of God I wanted to keep on keeping on now it's come if you feel like it oh read the word of God if it's convenient hey pray if you have time tell somebody about Jesus if it's a perfect time hey brother Jeremiah is your time perfect no somebody want to run you off the road and kill you the other day but the Holy Ghost of God got deep down inside of your soul 20 minutes later and told you to go back up there and share the gospel with that lady oh no she'll be gone she'll be gone God trust me son he get in the car and drove back up there she's sitting there crying and weeping needing something what was she needing she's needing God thank God for her servant tonight and open up the Bible and give the gospel and somebody gets saved Monday night a young man oh he came to me and said would you talk to my boss I said absolutely we sat right there in the middle of everything going on I gave him the gospel there he said I want to be saved and he bowed his head and trusted Jesus Christ as his savior he said I want to bring my fiance back she needs to be saved too boy we've gotten away from that all I am is just some nut down here yelling and screaming and doing all this kind of nonsense. Really? Is it nonsense to you tonight? What was on his farm? There's a sinning son on his farm. He got tired of it. He got tired of getting up early. He got tired of working hard. He got tired of trying to be doing right all the time. He got tired of Sunday school and saying grace. He got tired of Bible time. He got tired of prayer time. Oh, in verse 13, the Bible said, not many days after the younger son gathered together. Oh, man, he took his journey to a far country. He has left the farm. And there was a selfish son there. Oh, he wasn't leaving. But it wasn't right. Think about this a little bit. Your sibling leaving home, what's that do? I don't even care if you get along all the time. What's that do to your heart if your sibling run away? That ought to hurt. That ought to put a turmoil inside of your heart. That ought to hurt so bad. I mean, two siblings and they ain't even that close together. That ought to hurt. So you ought to be down on your face praying that God to get a hold of that sibling. Oh, this in here done got bitter. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you something. This brother no doubt would get upset because his daddy was out there watching. Every day he's looking down at that mailbox two or three hundred yards away. I can see that brother in there shaking his head. I ain't believing this. Huh? I want to talk about that younger son a little bit tonight. Maybe you saw a new form of worship come as you are. Maybe you want to taste that world a little bit and that music entertainment. I want a funny preacher. I don't want all of this truth. What the Bible said in John chapter 4 and verse 24, God is a spirit that we worship him and must worship him in spirit and truth. I don't know about you, but I want the truth. I want the truth when it hurts, Brother John. Hey, when I took my wife to the doctor there, I didn't go to any doctor. I said I want the best doctor. Why? Because she means more to me in this world than anything in this world. I want the best treatment for her. So I got the best surgeon there in Chicago, no matter what I had to do. Why? I knew he'd tell me the truth. I knew he'd sit down with us and tell us. I knew he'd give us a plan. I knew he'd give us an action. I knew he'd give us a procedure. And that's what God has done for me for 27 years. And he'll do the same for anybody. Do you want truth tonight? 
How Paul said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. But, uh, man, you aren't going to find a whole lot of churches across this nation anymore like our pastor leads this church. Every single service, it is true, true, true. Whether it hurts or whether it blesses, it is true, my friend. And we must have it. Everybody, I've got to examine myself every service and say, what do you need to clean up? What do you need to do? What do you need to stop doing? I want to be closer to Christ. Tried to eat down there in that hog pen that wouldn't even give him anything to eat. But when he came home, he got a new robe and a ring and a fatted calf and shoes. He found forgiveness and strength and love and mercy and grace. Like I said, you get clean, you're going to come up in value. Don't sell the farm because there's food on the farm. The Bible plainly says that for whatever reason, kill the fatted calf. This is Kobe beef back then for him. I ask myself, how long does it take to get a fatted calf, huh? Not too long. What happens when it's not a fatted calf anymore? The fatted steer, huh? The Bible said calf. In my mind, I began thinking, now, Brother Dave, how many fatted calves did Daddy put up, huh? Every time that fatted calf would get to be a fatty steer, he'd go get another calf and keep a fatted calf in there. Why? Because he believed the word of God. He believed God. He knew he'd raise his family right and he was going to launch on that. Oh boy. Man, this was steak. You hear me? There was food at the farm. This was stuff. This wasn't snap, crackle, and pop. This wasn't frosted flakes. Man, this was some stuff that would give you some strength. I'm going to ask you something tonight, Mom and Dad. I'm talking about the home. I'm talking about the house. Hey, you feed your children meat, strong meat. Or do you just expect them to get it at church on their own? Huh? You ain't expect them to get it on their own? Hey, do you, do you expect a school somewhere to, 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 to give it to them what they need? Or do you provi- provide the food for them? I mean, even the cotton picking animals got enough sense to feed the young and make sure that they're getting the nutrition that they need to grow and become strong. Oh, but you know, nowadays, boy, everything is temporal. Oh, these phones and these Apple phones and all this kind of stuff and everything, you know. Oh, it's got to be the latest and the greatest. I mean, as soon as that next one come out, we got to get our hands on it, man. All temporal stuff. Oh, always making an upgrade. Oh, but I'm going to tell you something. When this boy is in the hog pen and life is terrible, oh, boy, he's not thinking about that phone. He's thinking about that house of God back out where mom and dad is at. He's thinking about that preacher that stood up and pro- told the truth. He's thinking about the man of God that warned what was down there in the world of the far country. He is thinking about truth, some real food tonight. Can you imagine working all day on the farm and having to come home and eat pop tarts? I'm sorry, Pastor, but that just don't get it with me. I gotta have something that sticks to my stomach, amen. Son, you're going to start World War III if I come in my house after working all day and there's a box of pop tarts on the cotton picking table eating all that garbage, trying to live, amen. And the Bible said he got special food. That fatted calf. Hey, let me ask you something now. We gonna eat in a little bit. Yes, sir, I'm getting hungry right now. Hey, mama, mama ever make you special food? Huh? That sweetheart, that wife, does she ever make you uh, special food? I mean, man, you're eating every day, and we all enjoy eating, man. I know I do. Go, woo! I just love to eat, man. And me and Brother Moore do our best fellowship eating, don't we, sir? Yes, sir! And man, we, we're having good stuff, you know, but she might say on the phone, hey, I'm, I'm gonna cook you something good tonight. Woo! That's all you gotta say right there. What is it? Uh, uh, you know what it's gonna be? What? It's gonna be fried salmon patties and gravy biscuit. Glory to God. I mean, man, if you've never had that, you ought to try it. You get some of her gravy there up on your forehead, your tongue, or slap your cotton picking brains out. You need, oh yeah, you need brain surgery just to put your head back together. And boy, I come in and I can't tell you, I'd be embarrassed to tell you how many fried salmon biscuits that I can eat. Why? It's special food. It's 
something that I love, amen. God will give us special food if we like. Some of it's fried chicken, amen. I mean, you look at Brother Steve right there and tell he fried chicken, amen. Hey, by the way, that ain't a that ain't a leather belt, amen. That's a leather fence around a chicken graveyard right there. Somebody say amen. Woo! He give you some stuff that you like. Some special stuff. Don't sell the farm because they're happy fellowship on the farm. They want no hugging in that hog pen. Is this boring? Huh? They want no hugging in that hog pen. Then that might have been. There might have been some harlot hugging down there, but there wasn't no love. Huh? The Bible said that wasted his money on harlots. That's what it said in there. That's the truth, amen. Hey, he doesn't know what a hug was that came from real love till he thought about it after I, everything was gone. He said, they robbed me of everything I got. But when mama hugged me, it was real, amen. Mama put her arms around me and there was something about that real love. That caring mama has been there since day one and has taken care of me like nobody else. Huh? Verse 24 says uh, they begin to be merry. Let me tell you something. Boy, there's happiness there on the farm. There's fellowship on the farm. But it was joy and praising there on the farm. Hey, don't sell a farm because there's value of that farm. Oh, man. A little old farm out in Alabama. It ain't worth much. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of memories on that farm that you can. You don't have enough money to pay for it. Me and my wife look back at those pictures. And the tears come into our eyes. We was going through them here a while back. We saw Brother Otis Hud that baptized us 27 years on, ago. Hey, huh? You ain't got enough money to buy them members. Little old Hunter coming into this world and our pastor sitting right there holding our little old baby in that single wide trailer out there in the middle of nowhere. You ain't got enough money to buy that. You think it's for sale? You've lost your cotton picking mind tonight. It's not for sale. What's your farm worth tonight? Huh? Is it worth anything? Don't sell that farm because of what's on that farm. The father was on this farm. The father stayed on that farm. We don't read anywhere in the Bible to where he changed anything that he did. The Bible tells us that he watched. He paid attention to that road. If you love your children the right way, I guarantee you three or four hundred yards, if you only see a silhouette, you'll know which one it is. Huh? He was waiting. That sun coming up or that sun going down. He was waiting till he saw that silhouette show up. You know what? That boy, when he walked off that farm, his daddy was on that farm. And when he came back up on it, his daddy was still on that farm. He didn't change anything about that farm. He kept it true. And he never put a for sale sign. Daddy, you about ready to put a for sale sign out there in front of that farm? Huh? You whining and pouting about all the battles and about things that are not going your way. Oh, it's tough to be a Christian. Oh, 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 belly aching and whining and pouting and crying. You ready to put a for sale sign out? Go ahead and put that for sale sign out there. Son, you'll hate the day that you do. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Daddy, don't do it. You can't leave. Mama, don't do it. You can't leave. Papa, don't do it. You can't leave. Mama, don't do it. You can't leave. If we sell the farm tonight, there is nowhere for the next generation to come home. Nowhere. Me and Lisa started out in a horrible life, a horrible way on the storm. Oh man, the storm just come in and destroyed what little old marriage that we had until we got saved by the grace of God. We invested everything that we possibly could in that little old farm. You say, Brother Rob, why didn't you ever sell that farm? Why didn't you sell it? I'll tell you why. Because all the memories, we worked on it, we played on it, we prayed on it, we ate on it, we trained on it, and we're going to keep on, on it. 
We better realize tonight that there's nothing in this world that we can offer better than a godly home, a godly farm. Too many parents are selling out. I believe this with all my heart and I trust with all my heart that if you and I do like we're supposed to based on that scripture right there, no matter what happens, sooner or later, somebody's coming home. I go to my bed with that promise every night. You say, why, Brother Rob? All your boys at home, they serve God, they love God. Yeah, you ain't got no choice at my house. One of these days, them boys are going to grow up. One of these days, they're going to be on their own. One of them days is going to make every decision every day, all day, based on the way they want to make those decisions. I've told them all, all their life. Boy, you don't impress me how you live around here. If you want to impress me, it's when you're released out of this home that you go straight out there and you live for the same God that your daddy and mama has lived for all these years. Now don't misunderstand me at all. I don't run some kind of crazy spiritual prison in my home. You can talk to my kids anytime you want to, my wife. I carry on more nonsense as you can ever imagine. You probably wouldn't even listen to me preach, amen, if you come to my house and see our child as I act in my own home. I mean, I have more fun, more laughter at everybody else's expense. Somebody say amen right there. I'm a jokester. I carry on all the time. I want my house to be the funnest house that you can ever go into. But son, when it comes to this book right here, I'm no nonsense. I'm preaching the word of God. I'm standing in between heaven and hell. I'm standing in between life and death. And I want everybody to know how real God is. If, if you sell the farm, your kids can never come back to what they left behind. The Moore family blessed our heart here last night. I never got to really meet him and fellowship with him, but boy, did we have a time back there eating. I found out that our birthdays are six months apart. I, I found out that our anniversary is six months apart. Both been saved the same amount of time. We started reminiscing at all the friends and preachers that we have. And, and I mean the uh, uh, camaraderie that we had there for several minutes uh, until all of a sudden it got serious. Uh, he said, Brother Rob, I got to testify. I got to testify what that song meant to me that you asked me to sing a while ago. Son, it's a whole lot more than a song, Brother Rob. He said, I was saved as a young man. And when I ran from God for 12 years I was as backslid as I could be all oh, the people in the church didn't know it I mean nobody hardly knew it and my life was turmoil so bad and I said God why don't you just take me out why don't you just kill me I don't have any peace I don't have any serenity God I can't take this no more I want to do right I want to serve you God I can't take this anymore can you imagine doing that for 12 years I guarantee you people are under the sound of my voice right now that's doing it for 12 years nobody else knows about it but so much of the time your Christian counter its tales on yourself as a man of God that stands up here and preaches I connect, I connect, I'm an eyeball preacher, I look at everybody and something inside of your heart is telling your face, I want that peace and serenity how can I get it? Turn it loose tonight he said I'll never forget the day I'll never forget today when I cut all strings and I said, God, I want you to have me completely without any strings attached whatsoever. I want to thank God tonight that that man's daddy didn't sell the farm. I want to thank God tonight that he has been used in an unbelievable way, blessing every single one of us. Why? Came back home. Who's coming home tonight? Hey, some people need to come home tonight. You're playing around. You're messing around. I mean, you're counterfeited as you can be and you know it. Only you and God's probably the only two that even know it. You're going to mess around and sell that farm. Who you know that sold the farm? Lot sold that farm. Luke 17, 28, and likewise also... As it was as in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought and they sold, they planted, they built it. Sound like the same little old get together the prodigal son was getting involved in, didn't it? 
What did Lot do? Oh, Lot was Abraham's nephew. Abraham took him in. Abraham took him in and no doubt he met God. How you know, the Bible said he was a righteous man. Huh? Huh? He come out, started hanging with Aunt, Aunt, Uncle Abraham and Aunt Sarah. Amen. And the Bible said he was righteous. But see, something happened. He vexed his righteous soul. How did that happen? The Bible said when they had to separate and Abraham asked Lot. He said, what do you want, Lot? You just choose whatever you want to do. And Lot looked with those eyes, not his, not his heart. He looked with those eyes. He just scanned it. And he saw all that green grass down there. Well, watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah down there. He said, whoo, I want that. It looks good. If he could have talked to me for about 15 minutes before he made that decision. You see, my daddy, we was in the excavation business. He was for 30 years. And we had a wonderful job. And that wonderful job was pumping out septic tank. Can you imagine why I've been a welder for 35 years? Somebody say praise God right there. Oh, yeah, we'd pull up in people's yard. And, man, we'd just look. Me and my brother get out there. We got paid 60 bucks. $60 for the whole job to dig up somebody's septic tank this deep, all right? And we walk out time and time and time again and they would be a bunch of just old dried, burnt up grass out there and there'd be, there'd be, it'd just be as green as it could be. I said, there it is, brother. Let's go get it, amen. I could have told Lot right there, son. That's not wonderful that you're looking at. That's a septic tank down there, son. You think the grass is greener on the other side? You've lost your cotton picking mind. You better wake up and smell the coffee. You better get in the word of God and listen to what God's got to say. Yeah. That's true. He vexed his righteous soul. He took his children out of a godly environment and put them in a hell hole. Yeah. And I watched parents do that over and over and over. And I want to walk up to him and grab him and shake him and say, what in the devil are you thinking about? But I can't, it's none of my business. All I can do is pray that God will get a hold to them. Yes. It's our responsibility to train our children, not some stinking worldly institution. It's me and mama. Parents look at big houses and pretty cars and lucrative careers and I can go on and on and on all night long. Nothing wrong with those things if God wants to lay it out for you. Let me tell you something. God wants to lay it out for you. He'll lay it right out there for you and it'll be a blessing to you if he wants you to have it. We had it when we were young. We had it when we were first saved. I was making more money than I could imagine. Man, I was living an American dream. She was a manager over an entire medical clinic and run the whole thing. All the hiring and firing and management there. We was living a dream, man. I mean, you can't get any better than that. I had a four-wheel drive, the, the bass boats. So, I mean, man, everything you can imagine. Bought one of the biggest houses there in our town and just was living it up. But that wasn't a plan of God for us. Little old hunter coming to this world. We got to make a decision now. I said, baby, ain't nobody going to love that boy like mama loves that boy. I said, we got two good set of parents. Might not serve God like we do, but they have love for their grandchildren. But grandparents ain't going to love them children like mama loves them children. Now, I believe if we look way down the road, it's going to be so much the more worth it if you'll shut your career down and you'll raise the babies that God give us. Now, I want you to know right now, ladies, I ain't preaching against no woman that works. That's your business. That's your thing. I'm just testifying to you what this house did. How and why we made our decision. I am not turning my children over to any cotton picking organization to train my child when God tells me to train my child. If I am where I'm supposed to be, if I am living the way that I'm supposed to live, if she's the mama that lives the way she's supposed to be, then bless God, that's the way it's supposed to be. Try not to try! Yeah. Hey, hey. 
I know that ain't popular anymore. But here we are at 26 years later. And if she could come up here and testify right now, she'll tell you they ain't amount of money this side of the lake of fire that would pay off what she has with her children. Now, you young parents, you can take that, chew on it, because I sat where you sat and heard a message like I'm hearing and preaching tonight. And it made me step out on something called faith. Huh? That's about all I got to say about that. But I'm not selling the farm. Parents get their eyes off of God. They stick their children in worldly institutions. That's where they learn to talk like the world, dress like the world, act like the world. And this is exactly what Lot did. Lot sold the farm. What did it cost him? It cost him everything. It cost him his marriage. It cost him his children. It cost him his family. Oh, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. The Bible said, man, he got a hold of God there. He got a hold of God, didn't he? God was speaking to him down there when everything was going on. Boy, them angels of God came down there and said, we're going to destroy this entire place. You better wake up and smell the coffee lot. You know you're saved. You know you're a Christian. You better tell them, son. And the Lord said, I got to tell them. I got to tell them. He went out there and told his girls. He told his son-in-laws. And what does the Bible say that they did? They laughed. They mocked. They joked. Who is this guy? What in the world is he trying to tell us? He brought us down here and put us in all this garbage and here we are. Now he's going to be Mr. Preacher. Hogwash, daddy. It don't work like that, sir. Nothing great has ever been built on one event. Nothing. You know what great things are built of? Let's just work today. Let's just work tomorrow. Let's just read the Bible today. Let's just read it tomorrow. Let's take that boy fishing today and teach that girl how to be feminine tomorrow. Let's just teach him the Bible today and let's have some fun tomorrow. Let's go down to the church today. Let's take vacation tomorrow. I'm talking about a balanced family tonight that is run by parents that is devoted to God. You think I'm telling you the truth tonight? Your family ought to have more fun than you can ever imagine. No, musty, crusty Christians. Shut up here at the table. I've got to open up the Bible tonight before we go to bed. Be still over there. Touch that pencil till I tell you I'll break your arm. Are you kidding me? We've never had a musty, crusty time of meeting and praying at night. A lot of humor, a lot of joking, a lot of playing. We have our serious time when we pray for everybody every night of our life. The life of being a Christian should be so serious and so much fun. We get so out of balance. We get so bent out of shape. We get so much in distress oppressed, depressed, and I guess the last one will be permanently pressed. Then you sell the farm, don't you? If this place had the families in it, that's just been in it over the last seven or eight years, we'd have standing room only. That's right. Sad, 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 story. They laughed. They joked. They mocked. Lied. If my boys choose to go their own route at any time in their life, they didn't learn it at my house. They learned love They learned the Bible. 
they learned who God was. So they would make that decision on their own. Daddy, don't give them any reason whatsoever to go after that world. Give them every reason to go after this book right here. We cannot sell the farm. I poured my heart out to you tonight because of the message God gave me. You see, I won't preach nothing that God hadn't changed my life before I would try to give it to somebody else to expect Him to change their life. This message turned my life upside down. I hope there's something that's been said in this message that will cause some serious decisions tonight. If the ladies would come to the instruments, I'm going to give an invitation. Daddy, I hope we make some serious decisions tonight that we're not going to sell that farm. You imagine what that daddy felt like when he was out there and all of a sudden he saw that silhouette. And all of a sudden, he recognized that silhouette after all the nights of the pillowcase-stained tears, all the weeping and crying, all the days that he had to work and just go on, but his stomach was in a knot, all the days that he sat with everybody else at that table when that seat right there was never taken, it had been vacant, and they sat there and ate anyway, and they sat there and done like they were supposed to, but there was something missing there. It was not complete. There was a burden there. But buddy, that day that he looked out there, son, I'm going to tell you, he had a conniption fear. He said, praise be the living God. It's worth it. It's worth it. I didn't sell the farm. My son that is lost is found again. He's coming home. Hey, daddy, don't give up. Don't sell the farm. Keep on keeping on. And you won't be sorry. And neither will I. There's not enough money out there to buy my farm. Let's make some serious decisions tonight. There's some kids out there that need a home to come back to. And if you sell it out, they never, ever, ever will have anywhere to come back to. Let's all stand. The altar's open. Just obey the Spirit of God. Just make some serious decisions tonight about your home. Young parents, you ought to be coming down through here. You ought to be running a 40-yard dash to get to the altar and make a commitment to God. You young people that are in college and you're training to serve, you're going to be a mama one day. You're going to be a daddy one day. Let me tell you something. Make some commitments tonight. You're never going to sell that farm. You're never going to sell out to this world. You're never, you're never going to sell out to none of this junk that's offered by Satan himself. You're going to hold on to that farm. You're going to stand strong. Say brother, say, brother Rob, I'm here tonight. I didn't understand a whole lot of what you talked about, be honest with you. But I can say this tonight, brother Rob, if I died where I'm standing, I'm not 100% sure I'd go to heaven. You're in the right place tonight, I want you to know that. You're amongst people who love you and care about you. You say, Brother Rob, if I died right now, I don't know for sure I'd go to heaven. Would you pray for me? I'm not going to come to you, not going to embarrass you. I sure will pray for you. Slide that hand up and, and, and say, Preacher, pray for me. Are you under the sound of my voice tonight? Any word. Any word at all. Raise your hand. Let me see it. Praise God. Looks like we've got a lot of forms in here tonight. A lot of places got cultivated tonight, I believe. God made a drop to plow and went real, real deep in some farms tonight. You know why? Because he wants to put something in there with some roots. Like a big old oak tree. Planted down by the water. 
solid, standing strong. I want to thank God tonight that I get to serve with you folks. I cannot tell you how happy that I am that I get to serve with people like you. We can all join together in unity. Man, our, our, our properties join each other. You know, our property lines, they actually join. Me and Pastor, our property lines join. You know what he'd do if he saw somebody trying to jump a fence out there and come over and take some of my land? I'll tell you what he'd do. He'd stick a shotgun out the window and bust off at him. That's what he'd do. Why? He's watching after his neighbor. You know what? If he witnessed some of my boys doing something that they shouldn't do, there's no doubt whatsoever it'd be a phone call and say, look here, Brother Rob. Hey, you know I love you and I love your kids, but hey, one of them was down there. Really, Pastor? I sure appreciate that. I wouldn't say, how dare you? I ain't living beside you. Mind your own cotton picking business, preacher. You don't probably just take care of that church. Don't worry about what goes on in my house. Huh? I'm selling a farm. I don't want to live beside you in the first cotton picking place. Oh no. I want to hug his neck because he loves my boys. I want to hug his neck because he stands up here not for sale. And my boys sat down here and they listen to the preaching of the word of God. Hey, they ain't listening to some cotton picking perversion. They listening to an ever word Bible, amen. I don't have to worry about when I drive to church what kind of book he's going to have up here. He ain't going to come in here with some nonsense and start telling me about it. No, sir. It's the word of God. I'm just blessed beyond measure to be a part of this great ministry. Thank you so much, Brother John. God's, all God's people said, amen, amen. We have uh, Joseph, and I hope I say your last name right, Rainers. Yes, sir. Is that right? Correct me if I'm wrong. This is Joseph right here, and uh, he has... Uh, spent some time with Brother Glosser uh, this morning uh, with Brother Glosser after some conversation. He accepted Christ as his Savior this morning. And uh, give him a hand. Best decision. Best decision, Joseph. Best decision. There's a, there's, a, there's a journey that you're about to go on, but it's a journey where you're forgiven. You're a child of God. And like we said earlier, what did we say? Accepted in the beloved. Now you're affiliated, brother. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And uh, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And it's a great, hey, if you've never been saved, join Joseph in putting your faith in Christ. It's the best decision you'll ever make. And uh, lots of growing, lots of learning to do. But uh, you have good friends around you to help you and praise the Lord for it. And uh, thank you for that message, Brother Hicks. Thank you, sir. Boy, I want to be a good daddy. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but my daughter turned 16 yesterday. It's a sweet time. I don't want to change now. It's going too good. Hey, listen, it could all change tomorrow, but I don't want to change. Amen. And um, praise the Lord for, for a man who, uh, you know, you look at a man's life and you look at a man's kids. I'm not putting pressures on your, on your boys, Brother Hicks. I'm not putting pressures on your boys, but... You guys don't ever change either. I get the, I get the slight impression your dad's not going to change. <laughs> but boys, it's a two-way road, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Stay true. Families stay true. Strong families make strong churches, amen? And uh, let's just stay at it for the Lord and uh, praise the Lord. I, I felt a little revived tonight. That's what revival's all about, amen? And uh, so speaking of that, let's, uh, let's go eat some food. I stepped outside and it's not raining a drop. I mean, it's dry. It's, it's, I can't believe it. We were looking at our phones this afternoon going 95%. Now, by the time you get to the dining hall, it's going to start pouring. But out there, if you go right out of the dining hall, not a drop of rain. Not a drop. It's coming? Okay. All right. So when I say amen, y'all just head over there quick. All right. Uh, let's pray for the food. The dining hall's open. The tent's open. We're ready for you. Uh, what a great night in church. And uh, come back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, chapel tomorrow. Listen, chapel tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And um, 
Good preaching, good singing. We'll look forward to that 10 a.m. tomorrow and then 7 o'clock tonight. Let's pray for the food, and then we will be dismissed. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Lord, for your blessings to us. Thank you for feeding us from your word. Thank you for Bible examples that you gave us, Lord, of, uh, of a father who waited for that son. Just waiting, no, unchanging, always faithful, threw his arms around his neck. And Lord, for those that leave and want to come home, speak to their heart even now. Lord, the conviction of the Holy Spirit doesn't end outside these walls, doesn't end inside these walls. It travels far and, and deep. And Lord, please use the, the scripture and the preaching of your word in many, many ways throughout the next coming days. Bless this food to our bodies as we enjoy it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.